Welcome back to the channel guys, Brennan 9 millimeter USA here. And today we're gonna to be comparing two commander size 1911. This is the Devil Dog Arms 1911 versus the Magnum Research Desert Eagle 1911. Both of these 1911s are regular production type 1911 pistols. For the mag? Both of these 1911s have precision cast frames. They are not forged. Also, both of these 1911s are Series 70s, as you can see here on the Desert Eagle. Here we go. Today's video is sponsored by Core Essentials. Core Essentials makes one of the best gun belts on the market today. I've been using their gun belt products since 2016. I thoroughly believe in their belt products and that's why we are excited to work with them now. I'm currently using the new tactical reinforced nylon belt from Core Essentials. The nylon webbing outer layer is rated up to 500 pounds. It is a very strong belt. The reinforced power core center and super fiber inner lining make this unique belt durable and stiff enough to support small to medium to even larger handguns. The belt itself is rated up to eight pounds maximum. Of course, I am exceeding that with my duty belt set up here. This is what the belt looks like while wearing my duty belt over top of it. And guys, here's the core belt being used inside of a full duty belt. So it's strong enough to support that. It's definitely strong enough to support your CCW firearm. So now let's cover the belts and go over the system and the buckles themselves. All of Core's belts are 800% more adjustable than your old traditional belts. These track line belts have over 40 sizing positions to choose from. You just pull the extra belt material through the buckle and you get that precise fit. You can press the belt buckles quick release tab to loosen the belt. These features make it very easy to find that perfect fit no matter what your size. The adjustments in the belts track is made every quarter of an inch making it very versatile indeed. The track is hidden when you wear the belt and the track is nearly indestructible. We do not see any wear on the track belts that we have been using for over a year. The belt secured the buckle using the teeth clamps and two set screws. You've got classic style buckle designs here that do not scream tactical belt because no one needs to know you're carrying a concealed weapon. Core Essentials offers a 30 day money back guarantee and a one year warranty on their products. My current setup is running the X4 stainless steel buckle and a tactical reinforced gun belt. The whole package goes for a little bit less than $63 after you use the discount code B9USA. That's a real value and a good product that I have tested over time and I highly recommend it to you guys. I will be buying several more belts coming up and giving them away as gifts, be it for a birthday or for Christmas season. So here's the two different color belts that are available from Core Essentials. As far as taking your gun on or off as a concealed carry person, right underneath here is the release. And it's that easy. Very strong belt. Putting it back on. And this excellent leather holster right here. And that's right guys, I've switched over to the Dan Wesson for a concealed carry handgun. Feed it through the belt buckle, and then just grab it from this end here, and pull. And you're good to go. There is no slag in this belt, it holds it really tight to your hip right here. As you can see, it sucks this 1911 up right up against my hip. This is not a light overall package right here, and the belt does an excellent job. 
If you do place your order, guys, make sure you use the B9USA discount code and save 10% off your entire order. Now on to the review. So guys, moving on here, what we've been talking about is overall quality. The next thing to talk about is machining. The DDA has some serious misses as far as attention to detail on the frame. You can see damage here. It has some nicks in the frame itself next to the beaver tail. I'm not sure if you guys can see that right there, right here. It's on both sides of the beaver tail. And also look at how poorly fit the beaver tail it is. It has some very bad side to side play in it. You can also see it's not blended to the frame. You can see this edge right here. It's on both sides. And also if you look at the safety itself, it's not blended to the frame. There is an overhang right here that you can catch your hand up against when you're shooting it as a right handed person. It can rub you pretty badly right there. Comparing that to the Magnum Research 1911, you don't have any of these issues. You can see how well it's blended to the frame, right there. As far as side to side movement, very, very little. And the safety is blended to the frame completely. There is no excess material right there. Very nicely done on the Desert Eagle 1911. The ammo is supplied by Elite Performance Ammunition from Sig Sauer. This is their 45 ACP ammo, 230 grain, traveling at 850 feet per second and 369 foot-pounds. All right, guys, let's talk about the safeties on both of these 1911s. Here in the Desert Eagle 1911, you can hear just how great that safety is. And it does require a bit of effort, but it's very easy to manipulate from the shooting position, which is very important on any 1911 you may be considering. You want to be able to put it on safe. You want to be able to ride over the safety when you're in the shooting position. Very well executed right here. On the Devil Dog Arms, from holding the pistol, sweeping up and down. Both of them are very good. From the shooting position, riding over the safety to disengage it. Also very easy to do. Both of them quite good as far as the safety sizes themselves. And we're talking about right-handed shooters, right? Because there's nothing over here on either pistol. So for right-handed shooters, you're going to notice that the safeties are very close to the same size. And actually the double dog arms, I think, is slightly larger. So slight advantage for the double dog arms because of the size. But as far as the use of the safety, and the sound that it makes, both of them are very good. Shoots nice, man. Yep. Let's talk about the front strap checkering on both pistols. Obviously, they have it on both pistols, which is very important to young Brett and I. On the Devil Dog Arms, can you see that very slight overrun? There you go. Very, very slight. It is not a showstopper by any means and probably will not stop anyone from purchasing this pistol but I did want to point it out, just very slight overruns there. As far as the texturing pattern itself, 
Not overly aggressive here, guys, but it does the job, right? It's 22 lines per inch compared to 25 on the Desert Eagle 1911. With the Desert Eagle? You can just tell it's very well done. That's a little bit of a casting mark right there on the frame. I'm trying to get my finger near it without blocking the light. You can see a little bit of a casting mark on the Desert Eagle 1911. You can see some of it right above where the uh, front strap checkering ends at the top. Yeah. It's pretty well hidden in this finish on the uh, Desert Eagle guys. They do a little bit better job of hiding the, some of the casting marks. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you may have to look at some in person to be able to pick up on it. But you have to look pretty dang close on this pistol right here to see anything that doesn't quite look perfect. But a really good job here on the front strap checkering. Another feature I wanted to cover, guys, is the guide rod system. The Desert Eagle does come with a full-length guide rod in it and a bull barrel design. So when the pistol is locked back, it looks like this. Where the Devil Dog Arms has a classic GI style and a normal size barrel, which uses a bushing right here. So this is more classic 1911 right here. And I do prefer this a little over the other system. To each their own in that, some people will like the full link guide rod here, and a lot of people do like the bull barrel design. And I'll show it to you closed here. And I like that too. I think that's pretty cool. Just another difference between the two pistols. Elander Magazine. Favorite to feed. You know, a couple of malfunctions during break-in period is totally acceptable in our opinion, right, Britta Yeah, you know, especially that's just 1911. one malfunction so far, which was easy to clear. It's a very accurate gun, man. All right, guys, let's cover sights on both these pistols. Both of these pistols have a three-dot sight set up here. You have a Novak style rear sight that is snag free on the double dog arms and the Magnum Research. And again, three dot profile, Novak style. You can place these sights if you want to on both pistols. You can see that they're replaceable. I think the sight picture is a little bit better on the double dog arms. All right, guys, let's go over the finish real fast on both these pistols. The Desert Eagle has this really nice matte stainless steel finish. You can see the pistol is just very well finished overall. Just really nice quality stuff here. And the Double Dog Arms has an MP3 finish on it. So, you know, a little bit more lubricity here and stuff like that. Very nice finish overall for sure. The problem with this finish though is that we can see some of the casting marks. Like you can see that right there, the imperfections in the metal. So you can notice that I think a little bit more with this finish. Just something to note. Alright guys, let's talk about the magazines that come with these pistols. The Devil Dog Arms comes with two very nice, high quality, Mechgar made magazines. They are good quality, they really are. Love these magazines. Whereas the Desert Eagle 1911 comes with two 
Elander magazines. Let's talk about the triggers, the take up, the creep, the break, the reset, the refinement, the whole nine yards. Uh, let's start here. The Devil Dog Arms. It does have a pretty good trigger, guys, but I do want to point out a couple of things on it. Let's see. Can you see the up and down movement there a little bit? Okay. The trigger itself. So you have that much take up right there, right? So that's the take up. I'm gonna say it's five pounds. Reset. Pretty good. Really is, pretty good. And then another five pound trigger pull on it. It's a decent trigger, it really is. It's effective in the field. The Desert Eagle 1911. The ever slightest bit of movement up and down. Quite tight right there. Okay. Take up. Close to the same. But the trigger pull itself, I'm going to say closer to four and a quarter. Reset. Very little movement out for the reset and you're right back on it. There is no take up. There's nothing. It just breaks. An excellent trigger for a 1911 under $1,000, right here. So the Magnum Research has a better trigger? Well, it is slightly better, I think, in, in just about every regard. This is a decent trigger. It really is a good trigger. This is better in just about every measurable way. So yes, I think the nod goes here. The Devil Dog Arms 1911, I'm gonna try headshots here. guys in closing a lot of you ask questions about price i know you're very concerned about price and that is something that all of us including us take into consideration when we're buying something right we want to get the best product we can for the price that we pay so let's talk about price the magnum research desert eagle 1911 goes for 906 dollars full retail msrp and most of them can be found between 750 and 800 and some change so that's a fantastic buy for this quality of a 1911 with these kind of features it screams quality for what you're paying the devil dog arms basic black finish comes in at 1050 msrp so there's basically at least a hundred dollars difference between these two pistols and this one the desert eagle 1911 being a hundred dollars cheaper for the money and the better overall quality we think the Desert Eagle 1911 Commander is the way to go. As always, everyone, thanks for watching the video. And remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube, Bread and 9mm USA, and support us on Patreon for more guns and gear videos coming up in the future.